Congratulations on your learning journey with Flutter 2.0 and Flame 1.0. We're going to look into the sprite component today. The sprite component and the animation component are what we're using to place the objects on the game screen. They inherit all the attributes from the position component. One of the properties we'll be looking at is the anchor property where we can uh, set it to rotate and position either on the left, the right, the center, or the top. You, you can find out all the properties by looking at the source code for flame itself. So the position component here extends the base component and you can search through it and see what else you can access from the position component. If you're following the videos in sequence, this is video number 10 in this tutorial series. It's right after you separate the classes into separate files. The playlist is in the description. You can get an idea of how the sprite component does work in Flame by just watching this video alone. Uh, I would prefer if you did go to the beginning and follow along and leave your comments about improvements to the video. But let's, let's start off by reducing the, the scale factor. I had her scaled up 40% from the original sprite sheet. Hot restart. Uh, she's still kind of big. So I'm going to scale her down. Uh, maybe kind of small. So I'm going to set up a separate variable for the scale of the character so we can more easily adjust the both the boy and the girl, uh, you know, if we want to change the size, depending on how it looks when we populate the game with the platforms. So let's just call our character scale. Uh, at the top, I've set it to 0.5 or 50% of the size of the character and do that for both the boy and the girl. Just multiply it times the, the cut down scale, which is 0.5. Okay. should be usable for the game. Each platform is a position component and each position component within Flame has a attribute anchor. So you can set the anchor point of the character to the left, to the center, or to the right. So we're going to use different anchor points for the platform so that we can align it either to the right or the left of the width of the screen in this type of vertical um, jumper game. Again, the anchor is built into the flame position component. So that's part of flame. So the width of the screen is the first uh, number in the vector. So change that to size zero. 400. Congratulations. Your game is looking good. At this point, you can continue to populate all of the platforms or game assets in your game, and they will all have collision detection. And you can take an action. And the idea is that she's going to jump from each platform and then she falls Maybe it's the game over. The ultimate goal might be to make friends with the boy. So that's the basic plot. It's kind of a romance, potentially a tragedy if she falls off the platform uh, in the future game. Of course, your game may be looking quite different from this game at this point. The key concept is that each of these sprite components is a position component. The position component has an anchor. It has a position, 
Um, and there's several other attributes associated with that. So go ahead and populate your game with all the assets that uh, you want. I think it's a great way to get going and going forward. Um, you, you can get a pack for a couple bucks and or, or free and start building your map. And then the output of tile D, you, for example, you get a, a TMX file and then use it in your game. However, for simplicity, because there's only a few elements on the screen right now, I think you should just place it manually. We're going to cover a loop in the next uh, video to kind of get you a little taste. We're not actually going to parse the TMX files. So subscribe to the channel and hope to see you soon.